Our next speaker is uh, uh, speaking on behalf of the Downtown Pasadena Neighborhood Association and by agreement reached with the city clerk is speaking uh, for a longer period of time in return for a commitment that others who have uh, similar viewpoints and who are active and uh, in the uh, Downtown Pasadena Resident and Neighborhood Association uh, would uh, look to uh, this speaker um, as articulating their views. So uh, Mr. Jonathan Edwards is invited to step forward. He's speaking on behalf of the association and a group of members who would otherwise uh, seek the opportunity to speak as well. We welcome you. Thank you. Good evening. As stated, my name is Jonathan Edwards, and I'm here tonight on behalf of the Downtown Pasadena Neighborhood Association. We're here tonight to ask the City Council to reject the task force recommendation and instruct the task force to conduct a real analysis of the plan that the DPNA submitted. And if they determine that it isn't feasible to develop alternatives that provide us with better representation as a downtown neighborhood. We, the Downtown Pasadena Neighborhood Association, oppose the current plan and the proposed pan plan because it underrepresents downtown Pasadena. It maintains an inequitable four-way split that places downtown residents as faint blips on the radar screen of four council people who are preoccupied elsewhere. We are here tonight also to point out a bias in the process and a failure of the task force to adequately examine the facts, characteristics, and list of grievances that we have submitted to it. In short, the task force had a bias towards minimal change and did not adequately respond to the community input that it received. Their chair of the task force, before the process even began, had an interview with the Pasadena Star News in which he stated, the process is more about tweaking lines than making major shifts. To our ears, that sounds as if the process was predetermined from the start. Well, if that's your assumption, that we're just going to be tweaking lines, you need to ask two fundamental questions. Number one, is the current plan a good one? Are there any flaws? Are there any equities in the current plan? And number two, you need to ask, have there been any major changes in our city in the last 10 years? Demographic changes and non-demographic changes. The task force didn't ask either of these questions. It didn't conduct analysis. It didn't conduct examination it unquestionably assumed that the current plan is just fine as it is. Well, we are here tonight to tell you that there are flaws, and we are harmed by them. We've been participating at the very beginning. We applied for membership in the task force. We submitted letters, individual and collective, and we attended many meetings, all of which we pointed out specific reasons, specific facts, specific characteristics of downtown residents, and specific grievances that we have of instances of underrepresentation. We pointed out reasons why we are a distinct and coherent community of interest. Those reasons are listed in full in the letter which you should have in front of you. But I'll touch on a few of them. Characteristics that make downtown Pasadena different from other parts of our city. Downtown residents different. We live in multifamily dwellings apartments, and condominiums. That's a very different lifestyle than single-family homes. We own and drive fewer autos. We walk more. We use more public transit. We are a pedestrian community. We enjoy an urban lifestyle that mixes work, education, living, shopping, and entertainment. There isn't a segregation of uses in our neighborhood, and we like it that way. Downtown Pasadena residents typically have smaller household sizes. 
there are more young professionals in our community, and there are more non-retiring seniors. Downtown Pasadena is the area of our city with the greatest diversity, racial, ethnic, income level, socioeconomic. These are all characteristics of our unique urban lifestyle, our special community of interest. In our letter, besides those characteristics, we listed grievances. There's a tendency in this city to think of downtown Pastina as only a business district. However, with 19,000 residents, downtown Pastina has as many people living in it as the entire city of nearly as San Marino, La Cañada Footridge, and South Pasadena. Downtown Pasadena is residential. We are a neighborhood. Grievances. The residential impact fee. Downtown, new development downtown was charged fees and taxes that downtown residents paid to create new parks to accommodate the new residents. Those parks weren't created in downtown. They were created outside of downtown, in places that are inaccessible to downtown Pasadena residents. We pay for taxes to support parks elsewhere. There was a failure, there's a consistent failure, to appoint people, downtown residents, to commissions and committees in, in their proper percentages. The task force itself, with nine members, should have had at least one the city council, no downtown residents. The general plan update committee should have a three. There's only one. There's been a consistent failure to provide leadership for downtown issues. We appreciate the support that the council did for Park Now, for instance. But that wasn't council-led. That was a grassroots effort by the Playhouse District, not something that was led by a council. Um, in response to our grievances that we listed in our letter and that we talked about consistently, the task force did not dispute. They ignored our issues. They dismissed out of hand our arguments as premature. If you look at your staff report on page 7, the paragraph that replies, it says, the neighborhood association remains in the formative stage. What does this mean? People have lived in downtown Pasadena for years and years. People in our association have lived in downtown Pasadena for 5, 10, 15 years. We have been here. It says, task force members believe it is not yet possible to know at this point how the communities of interest in downtown will actually develop. Every neighborhood evolves over time and needs an advocate who will be attuned to his needs. We want an advocate who will be proactive on our behalf. In short, you are premature is not an adequate response to we are being harmed. So if we add to the letters and statements, we submitted a plan, which is on page 8 and which you saw earlier, and it's on the screen there, the one district, one downtown district, to show that it can be done. It doesn't have to be exactly like this, but it can be done. We developed this plan online and, and submitted it online using the consultant software as we were encouraged to do. However, the, the consultant did not print it out and distribute it to the task force as recommended. The consultant offered no analysis and no opinion of our plan, nor did the task force instruct the consultant to do so. No alternatives were discussed or, or considered which might meet the same objectives as this plan. And finally, when challenged, committee members made mischaracterization about our plans. One member said that our plan creates seven white majority districts. Not only is that not true, it's not possible. You couldn't create seven white majority districts in this city. That proves that they never really fully considered or conducted the necessary analysis on our plan. Side note. Arguments made a few minutes ago about the Colorado Boulevard uh, objective. I hope the council recognizes as circular reasoning. Uh, if uh, the reason for uh, Colorado Boulevard is that all districts should touch Colorado Boulevard is because Colorado Boulevard touches all districts, that's circular. Uh, the, the fact is that objective is outdated, and it's time. It was, it was a nice idea, but it's time to reconsider that. If other objectives 
if it results in unfairness, then you should dismiss it. The fact is, the current plan and the task force proposal harms downtown residents. And secondly, our city has seen significant change in the last 10 years. The gold line opened in 2003. The 1994 plan was innovative. It was highly successful. But it took time for those impacts to occur. And they have occurred since the last redistricting effort. It's time for our city to step back, look at change, examine it, analyze it, respond to it, conduct a real analysis. The re redevelopment of downtown Pasadena has been successful. The result is a thriving neighborhood. That is the ultimate compliment to your efforts that residents care about their neighborhood and are now asking to be given proper representation. Thank you for your efforts. It's now time to continue them in redistricting. Please, reject the task force recommendation. Instruct the task force to conduct proper, real analysis of our plan. And if it isn't feasible, to develop alternatives that meet the same objective, that provide better representation for our thriving, urban, pedestrian-oriented neighborhood. Thank you. I've asked members of our association to take any comments or questions or uh, that you might have. No questions at the moment, but we uh, thank you for uh, your appearing as a group. Uh, I think it's an impressive statement of your views, and uh, we thank you for being such an important part of this process. And we're still at the beginning stages of a final decision regarding the district uh, that, uh, for the for the uh, for the new new decade. Thank you. The next speaker is Barbara Nanny, and then Harold Zechner. Ladies and gentlemen, as they say, how do you follow that? <laughs>